Welcome to Church Online as we gather together as the body of Christ to worship, pray, listen and reflect in the presence of each other virtually and in the presence of God. Each week we light a candle, a symbol of God's presence and a reminder that in the darkness and chaos we see in the world, Christ is the light of the world. We continue our Lenten series, stepping beyond our walls to be God's love in our everyday lives. Now I realise that there are those of you participating in this service stuck within walls, either with COVID or isolating due to being a close contact or other reasons. So the title of this series is a little ironic. No doubt you're looking forward to being beyond your walls. But we do hope that this series is a blessing to all. There are connect or small group studies available on the Adelaide West Facebook group or email us and we can send them out. They easily convert to a devotional if you wish to do it that way. The Uniting Church Assembly has started an East Coast flooding emergency appeal to help flood victims in New South Wales and Queensland. If you would like to support victims financially, simply Google Uniting Church Assembly. We'll be praying for this situation as well as Ukraine and other places around our world later in the service. Two weeks ago, we held a variety concert here at Adelaide West. It was a fabulous concert attended by over 150 people. And most importantly, it raised $2,440 to support the resettlement of Afghan women and children in South Australia. Thanks to everyone who was involved or came or supported in any way. Today, in this season of Lent, as we prepare and reflect on the journey to Easter, we sing praise and thanksgiving. O oh, praise to the Almighty, sing praise to our God. The first reading today is Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 8. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. The second reading is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. 
So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by the wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is head, the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a big difference between participating and watching on or looking from a distance. Think of going down to the beach. Craig, my husband and I love the beach. We go every week several times if we can. After my surgery last year, I couldn't walk very far so Craig would park the car at a place where I could see over the sand dunes. As I got a bit better, I could walk on the footpath for a bit, but not on the sand. And then months later, I started to walk on the sand. It was so good to be back. There's a big difference between looking from a distance and, and being on the sand, feeling the sand underneath your shoes, smelling the sea, hearing the waves, seeing the footprints of others, the paw prints of dogs. You know, the footpath seems a long way away. Sometimes you get so immersed in being on the sand, on the beach, that the footpath feels like a world away. In a sense, we participate in the beach when we're on the beach. If I was a sports person, I'd share about the difference between watching sport and participating in sport. Once again, there's a huge difference. We are called to participate in the work of God in the world. Not just be aware of God's work, not just to talk about God's work, but participate in it. Today, we're looking at that participation but as this is part of a series, I'll do a quick recap of the first week, which is available online. We all have 168 hours a week. How do we spend it? Work is activity involving mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result. So work is wherever our business as usual is. School, uni, work, in an aged care facility, volunteering, caring for family, listening to others. And I, I would add now, even smiling at someone is an encouragement and that takes mental effort and intention and we do it to encourage and bless someone in their day. So when we talk about work, we're talking quite broadly. We looked at Genesis 1, how we are created in the image of God. So God is our vocational model, our model for work. As the church is the people of God, church is all over the place on Monday, in schools and workplaces and homes and community groups, wherever we are, the church is. Today, we move to the call to participate in God's work in the world. And next week, Craig will be sharing on the topic of rest. And as we are created in the image of God and God is our model for work, so God is our model for rest. We are called to participate in God's work. As the theologian Martin Luther said, we are not called on account of our holy lives or our religion, our prayers, fastings or works. We are called by God's grace alone. God's grace extended to us, extended freely to us, due to Christ's life and death for us, we are called wherever we are. We are called to love God and love others. Called to be a living witness to God's transforming love and life. Called to participate in God's work in the world. And what is God's work? We could answer this in so many ways. One of the most famous verses in the Bible is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. 
Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And verse 19, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world. For God so loved the world, not just humankind, but the whole world. God is in the business of saving. God's work is redemptive. God's work brings light into the world, into the darkness, into the chaos. This is good news for us, my friends. It's good news when we see destruction. It gives us hope when we despair at evil at work as we see pictures of innocent civilians, their homes, even maternity hospitals bombed. We remember that God is our hope. God is our light. And so too, as we are made in the image of God, called to participate in God's work, so we bring hope. We are to be light in our business as usual, in our everyday activities, in our work. We lost a beautiful lady from Adelaide West last year, Paddy. Paddy was much loved here across generations. She lived her faith. She loved people. She was a woman of prayer. She blessed people with acts of kindness, gifts, and affirming words. I have a beautiful bookmark that she made for me. She was over 90 and had moved to an aged care facility in the last two years of her life. And when she died, staff of that facility told her family how much they would miss her, her smiles, her encouragement, and her love. And several spoke of going to her room after their shift finished and she would pray with them. Patty is greatly missed. This is participating in the work of God. There are studies to go with this series. We're watching six videos by Mike Frost based on his book Surprise the World, Five Habits or Routines or Rhythms of Highly Missional People. The videos are all under five minutes and well worth watching. The first habit is one of blessing people and he challenges us to bless three people every week with either acts of kindness, gifts or words of affirmation. I've noticed that you're doing and I appreciate you in this. You could say it, text it, send it in a card. It's about being missional in everyday life, not just Sundays. It's wherever we are, whatever our circumstance, just as Paddy did. Given our 168 weekly hours and the importance and validity of our Monday to Saturday life, together with our call to participate in God's work, it's important that we talk about this as we gather as the body of Christ. The church must relate to our Monday to Saturday life. We must be relevant, otherwise it's just a Sunday club. Or if you're participating online on a regular basis or whatever day you normally do that. God's mission is not about getting people involved in what the church is doing, but the church getting more involved in what God is doing in the world. Alan Hirsch puts it well. It's not so much that the church has a mission, it's that the mission of God has a church. It's part of the Missio Dei, the mission of God. God is reconciling humanity to God, and we are a part of that reconciling ministry. The two Bible readings had a whole lot of gifts. Paul, the writer, often used the image of the body, the body with many members with different functions making up the one body. So the hand has a different function to the eye, but they need each other. And Paul says we are like that. We have different gifts according to God's grace given to us. Together we form the body of Christ and each of us belongs to all the others through that linking. Many are one. Many do the work of the body of Christ, God's work and participation in the world. It's a beautiful illustration that appears in a number of letters and is still as applicable for us today as it was then. Taking a general look, We could say that the Ephesians passage is about Sunday church where the different giftings and roles, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers are to equip God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. That sounds like Sunday church. 
Whereas in Romans, the list could be Monday church, wherever we are in the marketplace, so to speak, in our business as usual, serving, encouraging, giving, that could be financially or in other ways, leading and showing mercy, kindness. These are gifts to build up the Monday church, to make a difference in our world, to be salt and light, to be the salt that seasons the lives of others and brings light to the darkness. Because there's a lot of darkness in our world, a lot of darkness in the lives of people that we know. We could say that Sunday church is lifting hands up, up to God. And as God equips us, Monday Church is putting our hands out, out to love others, being a living witness. We are called to bless others. Can I encourage you to bless three people this week by kind acts, gifts, or affirming words, encouraging someone, develop, a ha develop that habit, rhythm, or routine to bless others. David Bosch famous theologian and missiologist said, to participate in mission is to participate in the movement of God's love toward people, since God is a fountain of sending love. Don't just walk on the path at the beach. Or look at what the beach is from afar. Participate by walking on the beach. Because we are called to make a difference, to participate in what God is doing together with others as part of the body of Christ, a part of the fountain of sending love by the enabling of the Holy Spirit beyond our walls, stepping outside to live out our faith in real and relevant ways in our business as usual as a living witness to God's transforming love and life. Amen.
As we pray, I'd like to share a prayer of the moderator of South Australia for Ukraine. Let's pray together. God of love and peace, we grieve the loss of life and the continued fighting in Ukraine. Jesus calls us to work for peace and understanding, tolerance and compassion. We see the suffering and the pain of your people. We see the anguish in their faces and the despair in their eyes. And we feel so helpless. Although we are so far away, we see that as your people, we wish to support those working for peace. Grant us wisdom, O God, to know how to make a difference, to support those in need and to influence those escalating the conflict. We pray that those who possess the power to make decisions will hear your voice and act to save lives and make peace possible. While the conflict continues, we pray for those working with refugees, both in Ukraine and in the surrounding countries. May they gain strength in the knowledge they are not acting alone. May they feel your presence and compassion as they show your comfort to people who have lost so much. As your church in this place, may we know what to say and do as we support and encourage from afar. In the name of Christ, who experienced deadly conflict and suffering, we pray. We pray too for those affected by major flooding in towns, cities and rural areas across southeast Queensland and New South Wales. We pray for the clean-up, the rebuilding, for the evacuating centres now providing support, for the many chaplains offering hope and comfort, for the churches, some flooded, others opening their doors for sanctuary. Lord be with them, strengthen them, we pray. We continue to remember Tonga rebuilding after the volcano eruption, the people of Afghanistan under Taliban rule, the Syrian conflict and places of conflict in Africa, for the flooding in Indonesia in this last week, global hunger and climate change. And Lord Jesus, we pray for this world with the ongoing pandemic, for all those with COVID and all those affected. Vaccines for all nations and all people, we pray. And we pray for those that uh, are participating in this service with COVID or isolating or feeling anxious in these anxious times. Holy Spirit, we pray for people on our hearts today. And we lift the faces of people who are hurting, struggling, facing health issues, feeling alone, hungry, or feeling bullied or rejected, we pray for them and pray for your love and your peace to surround them at this time. We give you thanks for your work in the world and we have the privilege of participating in that work. We thank you for your transforming life and love that you bring to us and to this world. We're sorry for the times when we let you down, when we don't look for you at work, when we do things, say things or think things that separate us from you or from others. Thank you that these things and all our sins are forgiven. Holy Spirit, help us to step outside our walls, to live out our faith in real and relevant ways in our everyday as a living witness to your transforming love and life. We also pray that our gifts, financial and practical, would be used wisely to show your transforming love to our world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. of the silent inland 
for you Deep blue of the desert skies for you Flame red of the rocks and stones for you Sweet water from hidden springs From the edges seek the heartlands And when you're burnt by the journey May the cool winds of the hovering spirit could soothe and replenish you in the name of Christ, in the name of Christ for you. Deep stillness of the silent inlands for you. Deep blue of the desert skies for you. Flame red of the roots and stones for you Sweet water from hidden springs From the edges seek the heartlands And when you're burnt by the journey May the cool winds of the hovering Spirit soothe and replenish you in the name of Christ, in the name of Christ, in the name of Christ, in the name of Christ. For you, deep stillness. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like prayer, if you're watching live, you can press the prayer button or send us an email and we would love to pray with you. This week, look for three people to bless in some way. Remember, you are called, called in your business as usual to step out beyond your walls, to live out your faith in real and relevant ways in your everyday is a living witness to God's transforming love and life. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love and presence of God and the cool winds of the hovering spirit soothe and replenish you this day and in the week ahead. Amen. Blessings on your week.